Have the mega funds been lying to everybody? A new report is out. Let's find out more. A new report published in June by Ludovic Filippo, a finance professor at Oxford University prominent in private equity, opens up a debate on the real performance of so-called private equity mega funds. Mega funds, as they are often referred to, are private equity firms managing funds of many billions of dollars in size. They are almost all concentrated in the United States and make large investments in big companies. Of these 20 or so firms, the best known include Apollo, Blackstone, Carlyle and KKR. Here we will look at the findings of the report and later in this video look at the surprising reaction from the mega fund industry which almost immediately followed the publication. Business School INSEAD estimates that there are up 7,000 private equity firms worldwide. Research firm Prequin estimated that in 2019, half the $2 trillion raised for private equity was pulled in by funds of $5 billion or more, the mega funds. On the other hand, the funds under $1 billion were at a 15-year low in terms of their share of fundraising. Funds under $1 billion are referred to as mid-cap funds and account for the vast majority of the 7,000 private equity firms worldwide. I myself am a mid-cap fund manager. Probably 6,900 of the global 7,000 firms are mid-cap firms. So the private equity market has been splitting between the mega funds and the rest. The mega funds are getting more and more dominant and it is therefore natural that they should come under normal scrutiny. Mega funds claim that they produce superior returns. For instance, Apollo claims to have produced an annual return of 39%, and Blackstone claims a return of 26%. Then, more generally, the private equity buyout asset class claims to have consistently achieved, on average, a return of about 3% better than the comparable stock market indices. In his study, Professor Filippo puts these claims to the test. Let's look at some of the highlights. The industry claims that private equity returns consistently outperform reference stock market indices by three or more percent. It seems that there is index and index. For the larger companies, the private equity industry compares its returns with the MSCI World Index, which happens to have returned 2% less than other comparable indices. For the smaller companies, the private equity industry compares its returns with the Russell 2000 index, which has returned 3.3% less than other comparable indices. So, if we adjust for this, it seems private equity has returned no more than the index. A recent report by Bain & Co. draws the same conclusion. The inevitable conclusion is that the buyout industry has been padding its stated returns by 3% or more. That's our first highlight of the report. Let's look at the second. Using publicly available information, the report analyzes the returns of the private equity portfolio of some major US pension funds using the metric of the money multiple. That is how many dollars you get back for every dollar you invested. The average was 1.5, which assuming an average investment period of about four years equates into an annual return of 11%. Then the report compared this to the mega funds published returns buried deep in regulatory filings. Using the same metric gave an average of 1.8. This was before the fees are charged by the fund manager before giving back the money to the investors. So the study made some estimates of how much this would be and having deducted these got to a net figure of about 1.6, pretty much the same number as the pension funds themselves. So the evidence points to a return of 
So what about these claims of superior returns we saw earlier? Well, there is no dancing around it. Someone is not being totally transparent. Many people are aware of the deficiencies of internal rate of return as a performance metric, which include the amplification of positive and negative returns due to the reinvestment rate assumptions, or using an artificially low starting net asset value. This, for example, was the issue with Yale's figures. The problem here, though, goes deeper than this, as it points to consistent misrepresentation of returns over a long period. One last interesting point of the report was the amount of fees earned by the mega funds over the period, which was estimated to be a staggering $230 billion. This has produced by 2020 22 multi-billionaires, almost all of whom are concentrated in the big four of Apollo, Blackstone, Carlyle and KKR, and almost all of whom are founding partners. A study by Josh Lerner also found that the rewards were taken disproportionately by founding partners rather than being based upon merit. So it seems that the mega funds preach efficiency, meritocracy and governance to the companies they invest in without living up to it themselves. Now we come to the fun part, the reaction of the industry to the report. It was incredibly fast, with rebuttals coming out just hours or days after the paper was published. They make various counter-arguments and quote various other reports, but it is the orchestration of the different entities' responses and their tone that is what is striking. Blackstone are not too bad. They say, we found a number of very serious statistical and conceptual errors in your analysis. Quite strong though, the very serious. KKR steps at a notch by issuing threats. Please remove this unsubstantiated and false claim from the paper. This assertion is misleading and should be removed from the piece. The American Investment Council released a statement on the 5th of June saying that Professor Ludovic Filippo recently released an incomplete misleading article regarding the private equity industry. Filippo's article ignores other research. Filippo incorrectly assumes, and even Filippo's flawed findings. Filippo's paper claims that this claim is patently false. Even worse, he blah, blah, blah. Wow. I mean, calling him Filippo, refusing to call him professor or even mister. Was this a rebuttal by a private equity institute or a veiled threat by a wise guy? The AIC has not covered itself in glory with its rebuttal. Not one of the other private equity professional associations has done anything like this. Not Invest Europe, not EMPA, not IPEV, not ILPA, not BVCA. With this kind of behaviour, the AIC creates the legitimate suspicion that it is no more than a mouthpiece for a small oligarchy of US mega funds. The questions raised by Filippo's paper are important because the LPs of these funds are pension funds and insurance companies holding the savings of the ordinary man on the street. Why should his savings be used to create a class of billionaires when their operations perform no better than an index tracking fund. That is wrong. Let's finish this story in Europe, going back to Germany in 2005. A prominent politician, Franz Müttefering, described our large LBO funds as locust swarms. Was he right after all? <laughs>